Pro Cycling Bets presents top five dark horses, top five underdogs headed towards the Tour de France. What were we looking for? We didn't want someone who was going to be have to domestique for another member of their team. They wanted uh, we wanted them to have at least a shot at going for the general classification, otherwise known as GC. These underdogs are looking decent for a top 10 slot at least, potentially one of them having a chance at the podium. It's really going to be a gamble though who's coming into a form at the right time. Most teams are opting for a two horse strategy or maybe even three horse UAE where they're have a few candidates going for GC. Coming in at number five is Tobias Halland Johannesson. Look at that smile. I think we just picked everyone who had a great smile and put them on this list. But the UNRX got their wildcard slot for the tour. So they wanna make it big here. They wanna make our sparkle, have them shine. They also have the other competitor on their team, Torst, which is another good GC contender. He actually has lower odds than Tobias does. Tobias has 401, whereas Trayin has 301. However, we did pick Johannesson because he has a better smile. He's won the Tour de Lavigne year in 2021. He came second twice at the Tour of Norway in 2022. This year, he was ninth at the Tour of Norway, 15th at the Criterium de Dauphiné in the general classification battle, and 15th in the, at La Flesh. Fun rider to pay attention to, Unwax in general, will want to make a strong performance here. Their jerseys, I think they'll have to change because of the color, it'll be fun. Coming at number four is Alexei Lutsenko. Is he too old? 30 in this new modern era of cycling? Who knows? Fifth at Amstel Gold this year though. And again, look at that smile. He dropped out the Tour of the Swiss recently. Is he just resting for the Tour? Is his, are his legs really that bad? He won the Tour of Oman back-to-back -back pre-COVID, so pre the modern era of racing. He's also won a stage of the Tour de France in 2020, so maybe he can make that more. Earlier this year, he had a stand-up performance at the Giro de Sicilia, and we're excited to see if he can bounce back. Coming in at number three is Danny Martinez. Odds of 81, another great smile. Stage of the Tour de France in 2020. Can he also make that more like Lusenko? Extremely, extremely adept at the time trial, having won the national championship of Colombia three times over strong competitors like Bernal. Recently won the Volta Algarve in Portugal at the start of the year, week-long stage race. It's Zulia Basque Country he won in 2022, and he won the general classification Tyrion de Dauphin. Coming in at number two is Bernal. 101 odds, pretty long, but given how he's trying to make a comeback here, that's probably why they rated him so high. He's also not super strong at tees right now. Bernal has had some bad crashes in the past, almost back to back. Really impressive comeback from almost potentially not being able to walk. He's also not a completely boring GC rider. He wins stages in the Grand Tours, like in the Giro of 2021, in which he came first. Overall in the general classification, he won two stages. He's been recently trending the form with an 8 at the Tour de Romandie and a good climb on Theon 2000. 8th at the Tour de Hungary a month back and a decent 12th performance at Criterium du Dauphiné. And finally coming in at number 1, we've been repping this guy for a long time, Matthias Skelmoles, Trek Segafredo. He's currently at 41 odds but we'll let you know we had him at 251. We don't recommend locking your money up early for most of the Grand Tour bets, but for this one, we're happy we did. He's letting up the Tour de Suisse at the moment with a first, second, and third place on various days in a strong, independent time trial. He won the Tour of Luxembourg in 2022, second at La Flèche Wallonne this year, pure power up the Mur de Wii, along with an eighth at Amstel Gold, a ninth at Liège Bastion, which is just an incredibly strong classic, second and third at multiple week-long tours also of the year. Overall though, there's an abundance of talent coming to this year's tour, an abundance of youngsters. There could be some dramatic shakeups, especially with Pogacar and his wrist. Will it heal in time? If not, you know, you got potentially two open slots there on the GC other than Vingegaard. Should be super exciting. We're looking forward to it. Leave your comments below for who you think is going to be in the top five, top 10, who are the dark horses people aren't thinking of, who do you think can make it into the top 10? We'd love to hear, discuss, banter, and remember to like and subscribe. Cheers.